thank the three organisations who brought us together this evening for bringing us all together. And I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on this evening and pay my respects to uh, the elders of the Gadigal uh, Nation, of the uh, Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, uh, and say, um, of course, that we always acknowledge that this is Aboriginal land. Um, in just seven minutes, of course, I will cover the three issues that the uh, organisers have asked us to address tonight. But I did want to go uh, a little bit wider than that as well, because I think we've got a big challenge ahead of us and a big choice uh, over the next 12 days or so. Uh, and that's choosing between a continuation of a Liberal government led by Malcolm Turnbull and all of the disappointment that that entails, uh, or a Labor government led by Bill Shorten with more than 100 positive policies in areas like health and education, environment and infrastructure, uh, but many, many other areas as well. If you haven't had the time to have a look at the more than 100 positive policies online, I really would urge you to do it. Because what they do is they are the most comprehensive plan for an incoming government since the Whitman program really much more detail, including well over $100 billion of uh, um, savings improvements to the budget bottom line that tell us how we will pay for what we say we will do. Um, I want to turn to three areas, local, national, international, and within those three areas I'll uh, tell you a little bit about the things we've been asked about. The first is local, and I think we need to talk about uh, West Connects when we talk about uh, local issues. You've asked us to, and I will. This is a um, Liberal state government project funded by a Liberal federal government with a dodgy planning process, a lack of accountability, a lack of transparency that will have major impacts because of that lack of accountability and lack of transparency on our local community. I'm particularly concerned about the interchange that we'll see chewing up part of Sydney Park. I think it is very important to say that this is not a federal government project, it's not a, a state Labor project, it is a state Liberal government project. And from the beginning I have said that the processes, the planning uh, around this have been appalling and that as it is proposed now, it should not go ahead. And I'm sure we'll have time and questions to explore some of these issues. On other local issues, I think it's important uh, to note as well that we've had $113 million ripped from our local schools over the next 10 years uh, because of the choices that the Liberals have made. $113 million less will be spent on our schools. And when it comes to hospitals, the cut to our local health district uh, is one and a half billion dollars over the next 10 years. In contrast, when we were in government, um, we invested in local schools and hospitals more than 88 projects through uh, the Building the Education Revolution program that improved every single school in this electorate. Uh, and we invested in hospitals. Uh, while I was Health Minister, we completed the Chris O'Brien Cancer Centre and the Kinghorn Cancer Centre at St Vincent's Hospital. The Chris O'Brien Cancer Centre, I should say, was completed during the last election and Tony Abbott got to open it with Peter Dutton. You can imagine how delighted I was having, <laughs> having funded it and built it to have Tony Abbott and Peter Dutton opening it. Um, just one other thing on, uh, this is, a, I suppose, a local and a national issue. I've been asked to talk about housing affordability. Uh, and I would take you to my record as Housing Minister when one in every 20 new homes built in Australia during my period as Housing Minister was built with Commonwealth Government support. We built 21,600 new public housing dwellings. We built uh, 38,000 National Rental Affordability Scheme dwellings before the Liberals cut that program. We did the National um, Homelessness Strategy coming out of the Homelessness White Paper and funded uh, fantastic, beautiful new facilities like um, Annie Green Court in Redfern and the Common Ground facility uh, on um, Piermont Bridge Road in Camperdown uh, and fantastic new programs as well uh, like Platform 88 in Wollamaloo. Uh, we set aside ongoing funding to do what we aim to do which is halve the rate of homelessness in Australia that's been cut by the Liberals. One of the most heartbreaking cuts in the 2014 budget was the $44 billion a year that I had set aside for ongoing new build. 
You okay then? Oh, okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, the ongoing new build, that's been cut entirely. And so, uh, okay. uh, so um, that is one of the great disappointments of this time of Liberal government. Uh, in contrast now, we have a plan for housing affordability that will not touch people's properties who are currently negatively gearing, but from the 1st of July 2017, will reduce the benefits uh, of negative gearing and capital gains tax concessions to people who are investing in new property only. This will save about $33 billion over 10 years, but more particularly, it will direct new investment into new build. One of the great problems that we have in this country is we're just not building enough housing. Uh, we're not building enough modest size affordable housing in particular. So we think that that's a very important first step. We've also made uh, additional commitments uh, around uh, extra funding for women and children escaping domestic violence. Um, in the minute that I've got remaining, uh, I'll talk uh, about climate change. We have a target of 50% renewable energy by 2030, 45% reduction in carbon emissions by 2030, and zero net emissions um, by 2050. When we were in government, we uh, changed the number of houses with solar rooftop panels uh, from about 7,000 to about 1.2 million households. We tripled investment in renewables, tripled the number of jobs, tripled production of wind power um, from while we were in government, and I'm very proud of that record. I'd love to have um, an opportunity to answer some questions about local commitments from the for the future. I've got nine seconds remaining. And I should just um, apologise up front. I'm not feeling 100% today. So uh, if I'm actually most sorry for the person who's using the microphone after me. <laughs> if, we had some, uh, if we had some alcoholic hand wipes, I would, I would wipe it down. But I'm very sorry uh, to, um, to be here when I'm not 100% well. Thank you very much.